I'm Baron Eric de Rottenhocken, mundanely known as Rick Strail, and I've been teaching a class the last several Pensics on how to make a lightweight folding camp style stool, uh, chair with uh, Glastonbury style arms on it. And let me show you what I came up with. This is something I consider to be fairly comfortable and sturdy. And it doesn't weigh a lot. And it has, I like the way these uh, arms are designed here. It'll give you a nice place to, to set your hands. Uh, the back is about an 18 degree angle off of vertical. And uh, that seems to be a pretty nice angle for sitting around camp. Uh, but it's not too far back where you easily slide out of the chair. But uh, I wanted to show you some of the construction tips that I used to make it and also show you quickly how the thing folds. And there's a chair folded. It doesn't have a large profile when it's folded up. It will pack nicely. It doesn't take up much room in your car. It's easy to move around. There are no extraneous bits to keep up with. No pins or extra dowels or nothing like that. And uh, basically it's got a cleat on the back right here that hooks over the back of the chair. And then helps give it the stability and that's how it folds and I'll go ahead and take this one apart so at least I'll take the, uh, the bottom off of it so we can see how I've done the, uh, the bottom of the chair and I can go ahead and take the arms off here real quick and show you just how these connector bolts work. While you're doing that, why don't you explain the math on the arms and how that affects the angle of the chair back? Okay. Uh, yeah, one of the trickier things that I had to work with was how to make sure this thing folds. And one trick I did learn with it was that there are three points pivot points this one this one and this one need to be almost in a straight line and that I'll enables, point those out again please okay this pivot here point here where the arm goes into the back uh, the main pit the pivot here for the base and the pivot where the arm goes into the leg so if that's needs to be relatively a straight line to enable the chair to fold down and also to unfold. But like I said, I can show you how these arms come off. And uh, this uses, I believe it's a four millimeter connecting bolt and a uh, connecting nut. And I believe the connecting nut takes a uh, five millimeter wrench, Allen wrench. So there's one of the arms right there. And when I built this, I realized I could lay these arms out while you're cutting them out to get two arms out of one piece of lumber. That would be like a six by one nominal lumber. and. I believe you can get two of these out of 50 inches of uh, the, uh, the six by one lumber. One's flipped like this, and the other would be flipped around, I believe this way, and 50 inches, jigsaw, and you've got two arms. Uh, let's, let's see, like I said, I came out with a uh, 
five and a four millimeter wrench. Also, uh, the four millimeter is a uh, has a English equivalent. I don't know what that is right now. It may be something like five sixty four or something like that. Is but that in your handout? That's in the handout. Yes. So it doesn't matter that I have memorized that or not. It's in the handout. And if you get a copy of the handout or even an electronic copy of the handout, it's going to be there. So let's reiterate these arms. That way you can lay them out and get two out of one piece of lumber. Like I said, this will be about 50 inches of lumber here of a nominal one by six, which is something more accurately as like three quarter inches by five and a half. But you can get these out of there. Another thing I'd like to talk about is the legs on the chair. And these legs are made to be a full two inches wide. The reason being is that we've got a three quarter inch dowel here as our pivot point and we want enough we want enough wood on either side of this dowel to give it good strength. If we used a nominal two inch, it would only be like, uh, I don't know, like one and a half inches, and there wouldn't be a lot of wood on either side of this. So I wanted the strength that we would get from using full two inch wood. And the way I got that was using uh, the six inch and ripping it, and I believe I would rip it twice to get two two inch legs and a leftover section. And I believe the leftover section is what we made this little cleat here on the seat thing anchors down. That may be the leftover section of that. So uh, the dowels that we used, I believe these are three quarter dowels and I used, uh, on this one I used poplar and I like using poplar all around on the chair. And uh, it's got a good uh, weight ratio to uh, strength to weight ratio on it. And on the uh, connector joints, on this particular joint here were the back pivots because the arms will fold over that when it's folded. This needs to be recessed. So uh, I believe I recessed this with, I believe it's like a three quarter inch Forstner bit. And the Forstner bits are very nice to use for this construction uh, and I recommend getting a set of these for your shop. Uh, other things I used, of course the connector bolts, uh, the dowels that I used, I will also use some uh, two inch sections of dowel to serve as these pivots for the chair. And of course these are locked down on one side and free floating on the other. And when I locked them down, uh, used four penny finishing nail, did a pilot hole and drove in and then backed out, glued it on just one of the surfaces, put it back in place and pinned it in with a nail. And that gives you a nice, good connection with that. I also, in this construction, I've used four two inch deck ready screws. I believe these are deck exterior screws and uh, Prime Guard makes a nice one. And these are, I believe, two inches that I used on this. And this was to Put it into the cleat rest to keep the cleat rest in place and this also has to be held at a 45 degree angle to the wood so it was one of the places when I went ahead and used screws in it 
Uh, don't have too many nails in this. Most of it is held together uh, with biscuit joints. And uh, the number zero biscuits uh, worked out well for what I needed. The These biscuits uh, are used for putting the back panels in place actually to, to glue up the black panel. So this one has, I believe, one, two, three pieces of wood in this panel. And I believe this is like a two, two and a half inch piece, another one, and then a five inch piece. And I believe this is about three eighths inch thick uh, poplar here. And if you'll notice, though I made this one panel, I think I've got a biscuit here, 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 and also biscuits one here, one here, one here, to hold this panel into the, uh, the back. Have you ever had a biscuit joint fail yet? No, biscuit joints are extremely strong. Uh, also, I want to point out this panel here is shorter than the others, and that's so you can put in your connector nuts and have them in place. And there's enough width here to actually slide one of these connector nuts in behind and put it through. So, uh, one of the things I had trouble with was figuring out how to make these chairs pivot. And I looked all around and tried to figure out what kind of pivot joint I could use. And basically, I gave up and I cheated. So instead of this actually being a, uh, a pivoting joint, this is simply a, uh, a thread rod. And this is a uh, quarter inch all thread that's basically running through a box. Here's going to be one of the uh, here's one of the nuts I was talking about, your connector nuts, and it fits right on to the quarter twenty threaded rod. So that is simply running through a box. And this box is constructed with, I believe this is a piece of uh, one by two, which is more like a three quarter inch by uh, one and a half. And this also is a slat, I believe this is a three eighths inch slat on this, uh, also uh, three eighths by two. And there is a hole made here. You can use a saw blade or maybe even preferably a router on both these pieces of wood to lay them flat on your router table, whatever, and then make this hole or this uh, channel all the way through on the wood. And that gives a nice way to hide your threaded rod. Also, it does put a little bit of strength into the project as well. And you can see for the seat on this one, I've used, I believe it was three pieces of poplar, uh, one inch nominal. And I put in biscuit joints to join this thing up. And also I believe I use biscuit joints to put the cleat onto it. And like I said, this is about uh, maybe one and a half inches uh, by two inches nominal. And it's biscuited on at a 90 degree angle to this. The, uh, the box that holds the thread shaft, uh, like I said, I've talked about how to make it. Uh, positioning it later, you'll just have to kind of play with it to get it 
where it's going to make your seat level and position it position it that way uh, this one is i believe installed by using more of the four penny nails the finishing nails and some glue and also more of the four penny nails and some glue to hold the box on be careful not to get glue in your channel or you won't be able to get your threaded rod in and out okay so that's a little bit about how to make that box and how it's attached uh, let's see. on the legs i realized that people would probably be rocking back on these seats a little bit so one little tip i like to do is when you're doing these 45 degree cuts on the legs is do a little back cut right here to take off some material and then round it down that way if you're setting this on uneven ground or someone's rocking back in the chair it won't tend to splinter uh, this inch edge off here uh, let's see the uh, some of the trickier things to put together on it are this 45 degree cleat rest right here and like I said I was at wind up using some screws and wood glue on this to put it in place lining that thing up is a bit tricky uh, and having a, uh, a 45 degree angle that you can move up to it and clamp things in place and then do your index with your drill and then do the other side make sure everything is still nice and square and then glue it and screw it together and then fill these up with a little bit of wood putty to uh, finish off that area another tricky part was this stretcher right here that goes in and this is held in place also by a biscuit on this side and this side and uh, the angle of this was such that when the chair is folded it would be reasonably flat to the surface it's going to be resting on that way it spreads the, uh, the stress out a little bit more against a against this angle here instead of having it hit at edgewise okay uh, let's see that's a little bit about the basic construction of it uh, on the uh, when you're putting this thing together it's good to have uh, a minimum of clearance on everything you want everything to fit as tight as possible because if you leave this thing loose it's going to want to want to rock back and forth more easily and wear out a little bit quicker uh, as i said before this one has quarter 20 threaded rod running through it and that i heard by someone who knows more about engineering than i do is plenty on a prototype i did of this chair I made a couple of these in pine and decided I didn't like this back design necessarily. I wanted a, a slightly different angle on the arms where they come up for the hand rest. And uh, I used on this earlier version some 516 all thread. And these nuts come in quarter, not in 516. So I had to figure out a way. To cover up this nut so i wound up having some uh, one inch dowel and I bore a uh, half inch hole into a little piece of that and it made a nice little cap to cover that up but with going to the quarter inch all thread i was able to use these uh caps that are designed for a quarter 20 threaded rod okay uh, I believe when I made these 
I started with the arms, cut those out to length, and then uh, would set at least two of the arms together and put a bolt through them and then I could work them together on a, uh, a sander and I used a drill press with a, uh, a sanding cylinder on it and was able to work both of these at once and that way you get an identical profile on them by doing it that way. Made those, then I'm pretty sure the next thing I did was made the legs and on the legs, there's a slightly shorter one and a longer one. The longer one is going to be for the front because it's going to tie your arms in to it. And the back one is going to have your cleat rest on it. So that is where this cleat from the seat winds up hooking to anchor everything together. This little structure here, the strut, is important because this is a pivot here and you need to have a nice firm surface uh, anchored down, a firm anchoring of these legs to keep them from rocking back and forth. Also, I've got these dowels in. I believe they're exactly three inches up from the center line of the bottom. So exactly three up is where you put a dowel and that's on all the legs, three up on the front and on the back. And then, like I said, uh, glued and uh, pinned in. And you can put the legs together and then work on adding the rest to it. Uh, I believe after I made this, the legs, I believe my next set step was the, uh, the seat bottom. And then from the seat bottom, assembled it. I believe I made the back and then tested everything with the back to make sure they work well in place of the arms or in place with the arms and everything folded properly. Uh, after making these and being somewhat satisfied with them, I did want to try out one with a cloth bottom. And it actually is a bit easier to make. And it actually takes a little bit less brain power to fold it. Because they'll simply fold up like this. But to me, these aren't as comfortable as the others because you have this stretcher right here that's holding cloth in the place. And when you sit down, you will a lot of times have this edge going right in the back of your legs while you're trying to be comfortable in camp. Now, if you kick back this a little bit, that's not too bad. It's going to change the angle of it but they just don't feel as secure as the all wood version. But like I said, these are reasonably, these are a little bit easier to make. You still have the general folding style. And what I've done on these is I've got two pieces of wood and I anchored in there. And we've got the wood lapping around with a quarter inch dowel here that's wrapped around fabric that's all sewed down and it's important to have the slot that you're using be smaller than the dowel so there's no way that can pull through. I believe I've got like a 3 16 inch slot here and a quarter inch dowel and of course the fabric wrapped around it and it's wrapped around to hide the fact that there's a dowel in there. Uh, the back one can be done exactly the same way or it can just simply come through depending on how you may have to adjust everything for how long your fabric is that you're working with.
So, so that's another version of it. This is a pine prototype. And this is uh, one of my final uh, chairs here. I've been very happy with this, this style and I've made uh, seven of these so far. And I do take my time with them and try to get everything in tight tolerance to cut down on how much they wiggle. Uh, I believe this one is finished with the color, I think gunstock is what they call this. Uh, the other one, I believe this one may be a uh, red mahogany color. I had forgotten what I'd used because these were not made as a pair. The original one of the pair was sold off to someone who wanted that chair. <laughs> so this is the replacement for the one that got sold. And I had forgotten that I'd used red mahogany and I wound up using the gunstock color on this one. But I'm fairly happy with the way that turned out. Personally, I like to do contrast in my wood selection and uh, purposely will put down like a, a lighter or darker panel in the middle to show some contrast in the poplar. I like working with poplar because it's got uh, a good grain. It uh, stains up nicely and it has a, a decent strength to weight ratio. Uh, and it's just more satisfying. When I made the uh, the pine ones, I uh, just couldn't get the look I really wanted out of it, but I was able to get closer to the, what I really wanted on the poplar, so I've been happy with that. Uh, also, be sure to uh, polyurethane these after you've uh, after you've got your color finished the way you want it. Uh, you, at least two coats of a good outdoor rated polyurethane, like a spar your thing and uh, that's mainly what I want to talk to you all about and I can be reached at erickbob2 at att.net if you want to email me about any questions about these or if you would like to me for me to electronically send you some of the plans I have for these what is the heaviest person that's ever sat in one of these chairs well, my wife and I have both sat in these at the same time, and so that was uh, that was 300 there, and uh, I, I feel confident they will they will hold more. Also, I've used them to uh, to sit down uh, sit these down at the edge of a tent to stand on to uh, you know get up higher to work on a tent or something like that. They are sturdy, and I will sit on them with armor as well. How much can you personalize the seat width without altering any of the math? The seat width, you can make that much wider and the physics of everything should still fold nicely uh, because your stress points are this quarter inch all thread, which is very strong. There shouldn't be any problem with using this design and essentially just stretching everything out. Uh, you may want to go, if you're really beefing it up and really getting it wide, perhaps beef up this uh, stretcher here. Uh, instead of 3 eighths, maybe go a half inch or maybe just a tick wider on that. Uh, everything else should be reasonably strong and hold together well. What level of woodworking or math skills do you need for this chair? You need to be able to make something with tight tolerance. Uh, I don't know that I would select this pattern as a first project because even after I've made six of them, going back and making the seventh, it's like, oh yeah, this is a little bit difficult. I have to take my time and kind of know what I'm doing or I'm going to get frustrated. Could you review the math or geometry or fitting involved in making it fold flat as regard to the length of the arms? Uh, 
the length as and placement far, of the arms? Uh, as far as the arm length goes, let's see. I believe the last three of these I made, I went ahead and made the arms first. And in the me measurements, it's gonna tell you exactly the distance between the center of this pivot and the center of this pivot. And that gives you uh, your arm length after you add in the extra wood at the ends here. And it's kind of decorative how you want to set that up. Also, it's decorative on uh, how, or you know, how much you wanna curve the tops of these legs. Uh, another way you could do it is you could make the arms and not drill the final hole. Perhaps put a smaller than quarter inch hole in there with something to pivot and do some testing, making sure everything's going to fold okay while you're working on it. But like I said, uh, having this point, this point, and this point relatively straight. Okay, granted, this is off by about this much from being a straight line over here, but if these get close to straight, it should allow it to fold. Now, as far as decorating these. Oh, you can do all kinds of things with them. Uh, you could indeed make these arms wider. You can even make them thicker. If you wanted to do, say, a double thickness arm, and instead of using one inch wood, heck, use some uh, five quarter or you know, have someone get you some two inch thick stuff or whatever, you could make these much thicker on the arms and you could maybe even taper them back. You could do carving in them. Uh, you could even do the carving with just the one inch style lumber. Because the arms are on the outside edge, their thickness is not going to affect how this thing folds. If you were to goof around with some of the other thicknesses, then it would. But uh, this design is showing good strength as is, so I would just go with uh, nominal one inch lumber on the legs, arms, and back rails. Like I said, I like these because they have a nice angle to the back. I think I've played with that a bit, and about 18 degree rake on the back is comfortable for me. You may be able to do it something different for yourself. Uh, do some testing on it to make sure everything folds okay, and you should be good to go. And I think that's it for now.